so the Arduino he said. Um, the BeagleBone is a computer, so it is. My brain's fried. I've worked too hard today. The Arduino is. Yeah. Con- on tape. yeah. <laughs> the Arduino is control, and the BeagleBone is. So you need more flexibility, we, we more memory. Or last week, one of them. We have asked that question last week. Oh, well, easy. We've already talked about it. Wi-Fi. Plug in the chip is Wi-Fi. <coughs> okay. The, be- the BeagleBone is an actual real computer. Okay. So it's a it's a computer that has GPIO on it, like like the Arduino. The Arduino just is meant for like controlling things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the, the robot. Yeah. yeah. Or the BeagleBone. I can do a whole lot more with it. You know, it's got a full operating system okay. on it. So the Beagle Bone is going to give you access to the outside world. Plus. 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 Okay. Yeah. If you could do that with the Arduino, it's it's more expensive and more overhead. I, I had thought about putting... I had actually considered using an Arduino Mega for this project. Mm-hmm. And then I realized that, no, I want the flexibility to add the Wi-Fi later, to do some other stuff later that the Mega just wasn't going to. So you wanted to add video to it, right? If I wanted to put a ball, uh, you know, a, a webcam on top of it, I could do that pretty easy with the with the Beagle, but I really with, with an Arduino and a video monitor. Yeah. That's Nothing to it. LCD, LCD display. Yeah. The fact touch screen. The fact that it's running a full operating system. I can install the Arduino IDE on this, and actually reprogram the Arduino if I really, really wanted to. <coughs> My thoughts are, once I get the Arduino doing what it's supposed to do, I'm probably never going to touch it again. Is going to be mounted inside and do its job, do what I want it to do. So you're just using the Arduino to collect data from various the, sensors, and then you're sending it to the um, serial Beagle port. Bone. Yeah, serial port. Yeah. To the Beagle Bone. So that's actually what I was trying to look for. There's my. So this is this is the code that's on the Arduino right now, <coughs> and this robot basically had four sensors that it came with from the start, and I've already replaced the one with a modern u- ultrasonic. So what are the other three? Um, it had a IR sensor for motion detection, which apparently was not the same as a passive infrared. Okay. Um, it has a light sensor, which works to a varying degree. Um, it had something else. There, there was some other... Oh, it's got two uh, limit switches down in the base of it. Okay. So, if if the IR is for ultra for uh, sensing s- uh, motion, what's this for? That's uh, distance. Okay. Okay. But you could use the IR for distance too. Can you? If you use one of those dual. You're not going to get very. It's not going to be very long. Uh, if you use IR, you're, you're dealing with the speed of light versus the speed of sound. 180 centimeters. Not bad. You yeah. If you use Light LA, uh, light sensor. You're dealing with speed of light. Very tight. Use sounds much easier to deal with. Mm. <coughs> okay, I'm just curious. So, 
But uh, I decided to go ahead and use the Uno to also do the keypad. Inputs here. Okay. Oh, that's oh, all okay. that uh, character array there was for. Yeah. It actually. I, I woke up in the middle of the night and it dawned on me how that actually worked. And I went, oh, duh. See, because if you look at it, it looks like there's potentially 18. There's 17. Uh, yeah. 17 buttons. Yeah. So I was counting every one of them as a row, mm -hmm. and it's not. They've just rearranged how the button. There, there's only uh, 16 actual buttons hooked up to the array, and they've just rearranged where those buttons are physically located at. <laughs> okay. So it's still a four by four array. It was like all of a sudden it just went. But, oh, that's a four by four array. Yeah. Oh. Which is exactly the same keypad that we yeah. use from from that you had. They're sticking with that. And I went when it. I, I woke up in the middle of the night. Literally, I woke up in the middle of the night. Went. There's only 16 keys on that keypad. There's not seven. There's not 18 keys on that. And your wife's like, go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went right down and I tried it, and sure enough, it worked. I was like. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> so, but uh, I still haven't figured out where the reset actually. What what's actually connected to the reset? Probably power. I think so. I think it's getting power and ground from somewhere. That's going to reset power to something. <clears throat> but could go. Yeah. So you have to load a library in there so it'll read that keypad. Uh. So how do you Arduino? Keypad.h. Yes, yes, there is a keypad.h. <coughs> you can make the keypad see anything you want. It doesn't necessarily have to be. So, but we we did that with with Jim's. He got one of those uh, flexible keypads. So it's really the same, basically it's the same code. I changed the pin numbers because I needed to move that around a bit, but it's the same code that we dealt with, you know, a month ago, month and a half ago. Um, We're learning stuff, <coughs> and they're using standard stuff. That's well, and, and we're taking what we learned from that, and applying it to something that might actually... And we're learning that a lot of keypads are probably alike now. Hmm. When you look at, at the pictures of the keypads, there's like the 16 key keypads, and there's, I think they're 9 key keypads, and those are really the only two I've ever seen. So. If you see something that's different, they probably just rearrange one of the. If there's, if it's some sort of 19 or uh, nine or 16 keys, they probably just rearrange the keys somehow. And it's probably the same, the same, same thing. thing. Yeah, no reason to reinvent the wheel every time. Yeah. So uh, I'm not real sure why that's still there. That needs to go away. Uh, it's commented out, so that's good. Um, so basically, it just sits there. It, it's going to go into a loop. Um, and can I ask you a question? <coughs> yeah. What's my serial? That's to activate the second serial port on the on the ball? on the uh, Uno. The, oh, you mean the transmit and uh, the software the software serial port? Oh, okay. The software serial ten port. zero and one I think it is. Um, that's the hardware serial port is zero and one. I'm using two and pins two and three. Okay. And there's a reason for that too because if you've got something if you need to program it, 
and you've got something plugged into pin zero, it won't program. So, I'm, and I can use, if you look right here, use the hardware serial port to, to output to the console. Debugging, yeah. <coughs> so, um, <coughs> But once it once it gets set up, see there's there's where it sets up the my serial. It goes into the loop and it waits for the keys to, you know, if no key gets pressed that's fine. It's also going to it's down here somewhere. Where is it? Right here. Where it reads from the, the beagle bone. So if the beagle bone says, I want to know what, how far away I am from something, it's going to send the number one, which is hex 49, and the Arduino is going to see number one on the serial port, and it's going to send back right here that it's some distance away from something using the ultrasonic. Where are you actually sending the character one? Off of the beagle bone. Oh, off the beagle bone. Off the beagle bone. Um, when I find an IR sensor that works, uh, it'll be the same for that. And that's the light sensor right there. So if I send the number three, it'll send back to the beagle bone information so the beagle bone is going to just say hey I want to know the light the ambient light and it's going to go and come right back the beagle bone is just going to wait for it to send something back mm. and so that's that's the basic code for the Arduino side of things. It's going to change slightly, but yeah, as you add, yeah, sensors. Yeah. There's going to be one more sensor, I think, and then I'm going to be done with. It's going to be pretty full. You know, there's only going to be a couple more analog lines that I could use. Did you know that you could use the analog lines as digital inputs? Mm -hmm. I read that in Jim's book. <laughs> we need to, uh, do we need to get one of those expansion IOs for it? Think about it. No, you I've could go crazy. Or I've got plenty. I did, there's 40 some plus. I'm talking about the Arduino side. No. There's no, because because the real. I'm 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 going to offload the real hard stuff. To the beagle bone anyway, like driving the motors and. So why don't you just use the beagle bone for everything? Why are you using the Arduino at all? Hi, <coughs> Frank. <Good question. laughs> well, sounds like there's more than enough I/O. There, there, there is. There's, there's way more than enough. Um, Wi-Fi is easy. The reason, though, display is easy if you want to put a display on it. Well, but but some of the sensors are expensive for the Beagle Bone. So you have to have specific sensors. It just can't read an analog sensor like this. It it it. It, it apparently has issues with some of these sensors, and yeah, it, it can read the the light sensor without a problem, and it could read some of the other stuff. But so what, what you're saying is that you'd have to come up with a lot of new software if you had the beagle bone to do everything. And I'm still going to have to come up with a lot of new software, but yeah, I my my thoughts were to try to keep it simple offload part of the part of the weight which is actually how 
this thing worked in the first place? It actually had a coprocessor in it that was dealing with the number pads and some of the other stuff. So after looking at this thing, because I used to think sort of that same way, but uh, since the operating system doesn't really take up a lot of uh, CPU, and you have a lot more capability from the operating system mm -hmm. as far as controlling things, it actually may work as a Oh well, I, I have no doubt that it would work by itself. It's just not except for the except for the ultrasonic sensor, which it apparently has some timing issues or something. Hmm. Does the uh, BeagleBone support threads, like, or is it just linear looping kind of a thing, those, like the Arduino? Now, the real question is, does Debian support threads? Debian does. Beagle, I mean, it's a Debian operating system, so mm -hmm. it, they put all the capabilities in there. Yeah, but once you're running, I don't know, I, don't, I guess I don't understand it enough here. It, it, it probably does. I mean, I haven't looked at this, but I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. Hmm. You, want, you want it to be a true multitasking environment. So, and... Yeah, exactly. With 512 megs of RAM, it will multitask. It probably won't be speedy about it. See, if you think about it, with 512 megs of RAM, you think back to Windows uh, I, XP. Mm -hmm. you, you got everything in this thing that you had in Windows XP with the computer that was coming and, out. And more. Yeah. Yeah. So with the Arduino, you've got one loop, right? And you can make function calls, but it's going to loop through everything every single time. So if you've got five sensors. You know, you could, you, they're all going to get queried linearly, over and over and over. Is that how, like when you're running program on the BeagleBone and you've got five sensors, is that five separate programs? Is it one program that's checking all five sensors? Is it one program it calling other programs? It. Yeah, you okay. can do it, it, you it depends on how you write it. Um, it's much more flexible. But that's actually a it's actually a good question because the more I look at this the more I think that you are looking at even a lot more than uh, is that the operating system that's the operating system it is it is on the new model is that a version of Linux version Linux. okay the uh, now, did you see where you actually have to enable the serial ports? It's got four UARTs built onto it. I, I didn't try to do anything with them. Yeah. Okay. You actually have to enable them. There's a whole, whole bunch of other questions I got about that stuff. <laughs> and that's when it came down to it's like it's the operating system. Because after a while, you get accustomed to the, the hardware platform. But yeah. yeah. How do you do it this with the operating system? Eagle Bone is a real computer. I mean, that's period. It's it's a computer, so it's running a real operating system. It's there's not as much uh, information on Debian with uh, Eagle Bone with Debian as there is you know, with the other distribution. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you wanted to see it do like maybe a multitasking kind of thing. Let's well, see. I was just curious how Let's it works. Let's see. when you run top, you look at all those yeah. processes running. They're all running at the same time. Exactly. Yeah. But we should be able to... i got to find that article. You don't have to go to the trouble of uh, demonstrating. I was just uh, well, curious. It, it it actually is kind of going to fit into what we're doing anyway. Okay. I don't want to derail the meeting. <laughs> derail the meeting. This is how the meeting goes. <laughs> That's my job. That's <laughs> 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 my turn. Yeah. <clears throat> Why have I never installed my password? Software on this thing. I, actually, I, I just did that on my BeagleBone one two three. You mean on the BeagleBone? No. 
my path the password manager on this thing so I can remember my password on your laptop on my laptop because I don't remember my password it's only used where you go it's kind of hard to <laughs> the Chinese know them all the Chinese know them all yeah and the Russians <laughs> <laughs> personally the Russians are better This is actually the software that you need, the, the library that you need to install to get the uh, serial ports to work in uh, do, do you, with uh, Python. Do you get those directly from the people that I use that ABC to get kind of thing? Looks like it's partially working with all kinds of errors. In it. I found this out yesterday, okay? Because I thought the same. Thing. I just had it plugged in like this. Thought it was on a network. It's not. You got to actually plug a hard cable into it. Okay. You're talking about a uh, Ethernet cable? Ethernet. Does a regular Ethernet cable work or do you need something special? Regular Ethernet going into your router. That works. That works. You're going to have to restart the, the Beagle Bun so that it can get its IP address. They, they sort of talk a lot about straight through cables. They talk about it like that regular cable won't work. Yeah, so if you connect it to a router, it will. If you connect it to another computer, it won't. Oh, okay. Yeah. Routers handle both ways usually. Yeah, your 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 crossover uh, or straight through. Your your crossover cables if you're going to connect it to your computer. Okay. So you now. can just get you know clip it to the router, right? Yeah. If you really want it, yeah. <laughs> Easier and cheaper to buy another cable. <laughs> the thing too is they give a lot of instructions about how you set up, you know, to put a static IP address on it. Um, and it just seems like it's piecemeal. There, there is a file called the all that you see. Yep. There's probably another one. Are they the only two that you need to uh, set up? I thought there was, thought there was one more. Hosts. Hosts, okay. Something. Something, yeah. There's, if you look at any Linux, any decent Linux tutorial on how to do that, it, it's pretty much the same thing. It's going, it may be in a slightly different spot because it's a slightly different operating system, but the steps are going to be pretty much the same thing. So, and, and like this to, this guy's how to install deal, he's using OPAC and that instead of, yeah, yeah, so I found out though that if, if you're going to use AppKit, you have to be physically connected to, to your outside. This network apparently is just a private network and doesn't talk to the rest you, of the world. You kind of get the impression that there's some magic, even though it's kind of hard to believe in magic. Yeah, yeah. there's, there's you magic. You want to believe in magic. <laughs> there's there's <laughs> magic going on in there, but this yeah. will this will enable the uh, for for Python. This will enable the other. It it actually enables a whole bunch of other stuff, but it will enable the uh, the uh, serial ports that we need. Is, is this the kind of like the not the command line? Python, but Python has been kind of a kind of edge. No, this is command line. This is command line. Yeah. Can you get it like a good version of Python and one that like the one that runs on Windows? I'm and typing them in one command at a time. This this is not cool. <laughs> You mean like an actual Python IDE? Yeah, they don't have that. It should have something that will run well on. Well, that that Cloud Nine okay. is is the IDE. And it, you can use it with uh, Python. Okay. You know that. Yeah. That, that 
that cloud nine that we were looking at yeah. last week. Yeah, that, that worked. There's cloud nine, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, yeah. Does it work with, you know, you can get the desktop. There's an LDXP or something like that desktop. Or your lightweight desktop or Super Bowl. So do you have, uh, I don't. I don't have the desk. I don't think I've got the desktop at all. I don't have a desktop because I didn't, couldn't connect to the network. You know, one thing keeps stopping the you, and you go to something else. The L the LXDE is probably the best desktop to run on because because of its memory, because it only does have 512 to run in. If you really really need a desktop, you, you don't. Act, you know, the thing that I was thinking about was uh, having Python in like a good IDE something that you can. Well, it, this is this is off of their web browser, you know, okay. the the local. I, I never Th saw that. That's that's as good of a yeah. IDE as you're going to get. I, I I never saw it. Maybe I didn't look. You, you, <laughs> you weren't paying attention last week. You were playing with your beagle bone. <laughs> I have reason to pay attention now. <laughs> this is on the BeagleBone. They've got a built-in web server running. Yeah. This is coming right off of the BeagleBone. So when you program it, I'm not real sure where it actually ends up sticking all this at in the directory, but it's all in a directory somewhere, so you can SSH into it yeah. and find all no, your I Python stuff. I just didn't try that out. So. And, and you can go and just type Python and stick your commands in there one at a time. But um, so there, there's probably, if you look though, there's probably going to be a lot of similarity between this and the Raspberry Pi as far as installing software. It's they're 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 all or any Linux. Yeah, it, it, Linux is Linux. Is Linux is Linux, with the exception of a few oddball variations like the Anstrom variation. <coughs> if it's based off of Debian, apt-get is the way to, to get software. Okay, and wget is, in, is a way to get software that's not inside the, the repositories. So, um, this is where you actually end up installing the, the uh, library for, for this song. Pip. Holy cow. Pip. That's old, old, old. That's pre-Unix. Pre-Unix? It, it, it's all, it it's all Unix. Before Unix? Peripheral interchange program or something. It's old, old. old. Yeah, well, you, you're probably... Where's the other one that was real, real old? Uh, this is RSX. RT11, you guys don't know what that is. There, there was something else on here that I thought, wow, they're still using that. But I don't. So this thing is emulate, emulating some sort of a f file system, right? File system? Like I see that you've got the CD commands, so you've got to be able to change directory. That's Unix or Linux. Yeah. But so is that, it's all uh, in a ROM or something? Yeah. So can you add files? Yeah. Where do they go? Where they where, where, wherever you want to put them. I just added. This is really see this little yeah. chip, this little chip right here. Yeah, that's its that's basically its hard drive. No, oh. so it's a it's a flash drive. Yeah, you read right to it. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, how it's much? It's either that chip or this chip. One of those two chips are. are how big is, is it? Flash how much memory is it? Uh, four gigs. I, I have fifteen gigs. I got the original four. Well, you're you're just special. I plugged in <laughs> another fifteen gigs. Oh. Frank, I don't know what to do with it yet. Yeah, yeah, I but you've got it. <laughs> and you didn't have to reform it. I didn't think you would. Cool. Yeah. So this is what I was actually looking for. And it's just contiguous memory? Can you don't it, even have it, to do it, anything with it? It's the way it's configured, the four gigs is like an SSD drive. So it's a flash drive or a mm -hmm. That's that's the way. It's and the oper you know, even if you had to reconfigure the operating system, worries about it. Like if you want to make partitions, you can do it. Same way you do it. Anyway, oh, okay. 
if yeah, and if you want additional storage, if you want additional storage, just got the SD slot. Okay. Which is what Frank is talking about, adding 16 gigs. Okay. Can you micro microwave? Yeah. Can There's you plug in a like a flash drive in the a USB, USB drive? Port? Yeah, USB drive. I don't see why not. I don't see why not. Should show up in the devices list. Some variations of Linux for the media list, maybe. Yep, there it is. USB stick. Cool. Uh, if we go USB stick. Yeah, put quotes around it. Because there's oh, space, space in, in it. it. So I've got stuff on this. This is a bootable USB stick, apparently. I've got a I've got a variation of Linux on this USB stick. If we do it the right way, I should tell it to unmount it. If we did it the right way. So those are in the seventy dollar range. What the Beagle ones? Yeah. Fifty five. Fifty five. Okay. MCM. Look up MCM Electronics. MCM.com or something like that? MCMElectronics.com. No, no, no. MCM.com will get you somewhere else. You don't want to go somewhere else. <laughs> Wake up! It's coffee time! I'm, I'm good. No, I'm good too, thanks. <coughs> so it's uh mcmlocktronics.com. We got some blow ups that are going on. Do what? There's some kind of blow ups that are going on. Like Macy's. They always going they, on. They, they've, they've always got <laughs> sales going on. Now that I bought the same phone, they send me an email every day. It's mm -hmm. like this. Well, it's like that. Well. Did, did you really think that they weren't going to try to hit you up for more stuff? It, it, it's it's kind of like a candy store, though. It's a place to stay out of because you might buy something on impulse. Oh, I know. Sort of like food for us. Yeah. Generally speaking, they've got decent prices on everything, too. Yeah, they're competitive. They're really competitive. There's there's been a few things, but generally speaking, they're they've got good prices on stuff. Yeah, I usually buy everything from eBay <coughs> or Amazon. Or but there's there's some stuff they can't touch. I mean, there there really is. But if I really need something in quick, I'll look at MCM real fast just to see what their price is. Cause they probably got it, and it's probably within a couple of dollars of what you can get. trying to find another I'm running two different Pythons right now or I was see I'm in one terminal running the blink thing and it's blinking so which one is in the path but you should be able to run more than one Do you have I I could no. but I'm right now he just wanted to know if you could do more than one thing and I'm doing more than one thing I'm doing a lot more than one thing. If, if you think about the way Unix works, you know, let's say you should be able to do multiple stuff. Uh, and I would just assume that you could do it. I could actually. You can't do it. Is, is it just time slicing each process? Time slicing. Time slicing each thing is running. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everybody gets a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one processor, so. So it's running 
it's running the, the blink LED uh, <coughs> process over here in this window and it's running my get stuff from mm. the Arduino so everything runs in its own shell all these different programs just run in their own shell um, the, the way I initiated it correct but but you could put them in the background I could run, run them in the back I could <coughs> actually tell which is what I'm going to do once I get this program actually finished and wrote every time this thing boots it will start this program it'll just auto start it and run it in the background <coughs> you won't need to be logged in or anything else and, and if you if you wanted to view pretty much everything you could see a screen you could see what's running how much CPU is using memory is using see it's getting it's getting some data from somewhere because it shouldn't be getting but there's two different there's two different processes going on right now that I've initiated plus there's probably a couple of hundred that I haven't initiated look at all them processes all being ran by the root that's me. I'm the root. I'm logged in as the root user the root of all. What? <laughs> but so to answer to answer the question, it it'll run quite a few processors by itself. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And there's I don't know where I'm actually. Ninety four percent idle. Yeah. <laughs> and. Linux is very streamlined. It, it, unless you're doing something really intensive, it really doesn't use the processor much. But uh, see, there's this uh, thing called ConTab. Yeah. And oh, then it's Cron. Also known as Cron. And when you set up your Crons, you can set it up to start every time it boots or certain times of the day or yeah yeah I've used Chrome I used to use Unix so that was decades ago it, it hasn't it's hasn't been a lot it's been updated but it hasn't changed yeah. <laughs> yeah. we're talking about a an operating system that is very popular and has its it's very very much still rooted where it started which was in Unix yeah or a variation of primarily command line driven uh, I mean, you're not gonna, I, you're I not gonna run Windows or rather some sort of X terminal on that. Uh, well, you can't run X terminal yeah. on this problem. That that would be a waste. Uh, well, I mean, the LXDD desktop is going to run. That's part of. I haven't seen it run. How much? How much CPU does it use? Because I know it X runs a lot. It doesn't use a whole lot. But that's 